and record. Uh, okay, after that. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Then share right. uh, with me. So you go first to what file followed by new, mm -hmm. followed by project, and then we can call the project Mutu driver. Okay. Right. And then yeah. you write you right click on the project, you click new, followed by schematic. And then you have an interface looking like this, correct? Yeah. A few things to note. You see the plus here. Um, it hasn't shown up yet. All right. You see the plus here where my cursor is. Nope. I'm seeing um, that the old screen where you used to create the project. Maybe you shared a particular window instead of the entire desktop. That's why I'm not. Correct. Correct. Let me do that. A moment. Okay. Maybe you might even have to stop um, sharing and okay. Now okay, so are you good now? Yeah. Do you see the plus here? Yeah. So that is the origin of your document. So everything you are doing should be referenced to this origin. And okay. components that you are going to place on the screen as well must have their origins. So notice that okay. we plus on some items. So the first thing you would want to do is to make it a correct technical diagram. So you need like a title block. You can click on add parts. This is your add part button. Okay. This is your add design block button. This is where you can do the connections, the net. This is where you can have your bus and then define various connections in it. And okay. then if you want to create a junction, you can use this guy. And okay. if you want to label something, I'll show you how to use that. You can use this guy. And then if you want to name some parts, let's say a resistor is called pi. You can call the resistor pi using this one. And if the value of the resistor called pi is 20k, you can change that value using this. Okay. These are the main things you need to be able to use eager all the way from here to this side. Okay. Two other things I hit this one, delete, and then copy, and then the paste. Okay. As well as the move and then the rotate. And this one is very clear. You want to select a couple of items. You can just group them like this using this icon. You get it? Okay. All right. So I am going. Is there some question you want to ask over here? Um, no. In this interface before. Yeah. So you click on add part, and then the first thing we will add is the frame. Okay. So you can search for frame here and see what to come. If you are lucky, frame will come. But if you are not lucky, you have to like scroll down the library to find the frame. Some few tricks you should note is you can type this, something like this. Okay. So you can use the star, the, the wildcard. It will help you okay. make your search like faster. So we can choose this guy. This guy is a very good one. This in landscape mode. So I'm going to select it and then I'll place it A4 something something slash lock. When you go back to the video, you'll be able to see the exact one. A4L slash lock. You see it? Yeah. Correct. So this is my title block. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to import the a mention the name for me again um a4988 a4988 you yeah, know let, a4. let me share my my entire screen so that okay. you can see what i am doing so stop share and share screen So I just clicked on screen. Okay. You can see my browser now, correct? Yeah. Correct. So one of those places you can get a lot of those modules is diymodules.com. Okay. DIYmodules.com. 
Diy.org slash eagle. Diy modules.org slash eagle. Okay. We have a lot of modules that you can download and then you are able to find a lot of good things in it. As okay. at today, they have a lot of things. So when we add it, I'll just, so you can just download their library and I'm hoping that we'll find that Motu driver in it. So when you download it, you can keep it maybe on your desktop or wherever, and then you come into Eagle. Can you see the Eagle screen? Yeah. Good. And then you click on library. Mm -hmm. And then when you click on library, you go to library manager. Okay. And then you can, that's why I said I don't like the old one. <laughs> now connecting to the internet. Which is better because it will, it is keeping your things update uh, up to date. No, that's what you think. It's not fast. I have to wait for it. Is your internet? Yo. Okay. So it's done now. Yeah. So you can click on. Uh, You can click on in use and then you select browse. Okay. And then you can, I think I already have it installed, DIY module. I already have it installed over here. But I was just showing you how to go about it. So you can come to your desktop and then you select it. And then when you select it and you scroll down the list, you'll be able to see DIY modules among your library path. You see it here. Okay. Yeah. So you see two copies of it over here. Okay. So does this bring um, the footprint and the 3D? Yes, everything, everything. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, another thing I think I should show you how to make your own part. It's one of the most useful tips you need with Eagle. Okay. Uh -huh. But you, when we finish the project, I can show you. Okay. So we are good to go now. So we can click back on add. And then we look through the DIY modules. So this is it, DIY modules. So you can see it has uh, some back converter. It looks like this. You've seen this before, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, so they made this footprint and this the they made this symbol and this the footprint. I see. So let's go to Moto Driver. So I'm just like playing the. But there is another DIY models. Yeah, that's the second one I just imported. Okay. So this is stepper driver L six four seven zero. Is that what you need? This no, is my one. Eight four nine eight eight. Okay. So we haven't got it. So let's just go back to Google and then we type A four nine eight eight. Eagle library. All right, so it still takes us back to that same place, diymodules.org. And do you see what you see here? Yeah. Is that not yeah, it? That's it. All right. Yeah. There's another one here, but this is not what we need. Yeah. So you download this guy. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so I'll save it on my desktop once more, and then I'll go back to my schematic, go to library, and then open library manager as well, click on in use, and then I'll browse to my desktop, and I'll look for this clean call, clean something, something. Yeah. Correct. So to just ensure that it is installed, I will scroll down and see. So here, here you are, clean Kong. All right. So I'll go back to add, and then I'll look for clean Kong. So here we are. 
Mm -hmm. And then this is our beautiful A4980. Yeah. But relax, I don't see the footprint. Mm -hmm. I see other footprints here, but I don't see the footprint for that one. Okay, maybe, maybe I. You have to download them separately or something. No, no, no. I don't think the guy did work. He didn't work on this library. But you let's scroll and see. Uh, so that's also um, a list of other things. Yeah, that he has included in his own. Yeah. If you don't mind, I can make it for you to see. I can make the library part for you to see. Okay. All right. You want that route? Yeah, that will help. You have one hour. <laughs> okay. So how, many, how many sessions will we have? Four, right? We have like three or four. Okay. Okay, so I can do it for you. Let's go. So for that one, you go to, so I'll abandon this for now. Okay. And then I'll come back to it later. So let's call it Moto Driver. Okay. So I'll close this. Do you still see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so I'll come here to file, followed by new, followed by library. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, every library part that you want to make comprises of three diff okay now it is four different items the device the footprint the 3d package and the symbol okay and then when you are done designing all of those then you you'll be able to connect all of them okay so okay. Right now we are in a, a blank library path so i'll click on save and then i'll call it a4988 module correct So that is the name of the library. The next thing I'll do is, you see this guy, device. I need to create a new device. After that, I'll create a new footprint. After that, I'll create a new symbol, okay? So the name of the device is going to be A4988. So it's asking me if I want to create it and I'll say yes. Correct. So when I do this, I've not done anything yet. The next thing I will do is I'll make this one go down. A minute. Okay. So I've created the device. The next thing I'll do is to create the symbol. Okay. okay. So I'll click on the symbol. So you see that this side is also blank. And then I'll type E49. It, it here as well and i'll press on yes so it has given me the canvas to draw the symbol of the device i am working on and the okay. next thing i need to create is the footprint so i click on this guy you see that there's nothing here as well mm -hmm. i'll call this one e49 it is and then i'll press on okay and then it has given me like the board menu for the footprint you see that yeah so now if I click on open device, I now have this device that I can work on. If I click on open footprint, I now have this footprint. If I click on open symbol, I have this symbol, correct? So let me start work on the symbol. So I'll just click on symbol and then I'll press on OK. So once again, we need to look for our origin. So I'll press on star and then we can start drawing it now. Well, when, you, when you clicked on it, what happened? I didn't see anything change. Nothing changed. It has given me its own grid. Okay. Now, one of the things you should focus on is each of these boxes has a dimension. Okay? Okay. So right now, each box is 0 0.1 inch. Because we are from the metric system, I will go with the millimeter. Which okay. Is, this one is in imperial system now, so I'll change it to, what, to metric. All right, so I'll click here and then I'll change it from metric to, sorry, imperial to metric. And then I'll make one of this one millimeter 
one box to be one millimeter square. Do you understand? Okay. And then I'll press on OK. So this is better now. Now, and how do you know that one millimeter is good enough for what you are doing? Is it because you, you know that um, the, the header pins are separated by that distance? Um, I know that the header pins are separated by 2.54 millimeters or okay. one point. Yeah, it's separated by 2.54 uh, mil, which is the same as 1.27 millimeters. For that, I know. But I am working with millimeter. I'll be changing it based on which one suits me. Okay. Okay. So I'll now start with millimeters. So the symbol for the module, all we need to do is to just draw a box. Do you agree with me? Okay. You will draw a box like this, something like this. So right now, I want it to be just under 1.5 millimeters, so I can see the distance through which I am traveling. Where, where are you seeing that distance? On the top. You see, when I'm moving the oh, okay. some numbers are moving. So this thing is roughly 2.4 millimeters, like long. If you are not sure and you want to measure it, you can use this guy, dimension. Just click on the side. So it is 1.7 millimeters tall. Okay. And then this side is, it will be roughly 1.3 millimeters tall. Okay. So this way, it is not too big. And when you are putting it in your schematic, it is very sizable. Okay. Right. Now, let's Google the part we are looking for. E49. It, it. Let's just look at the pinout. I'm sure this is what you have. Yeah. So it, it's, it's having how many pins? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then another eight over here, correct? So I'll come here, and then you see this guy, pin. I'll start from here. But which one is that? I click on here, pin. Okay. So I have the first one, one, two. So I'm making them two millimeters apart. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one is eight. And then I'll rotate it using the right clicking uh, operation on the keyboard. Let me zoom in a little for you to see what I am doing. Yeah. Can you see better now? Yeah. All right. So I have an, I, I've rotated this. Can you see that? Using yeah. the right click operation. So I'll click on this. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we are good. So let me delete the dimension data so that it would make it a little clearer. All right, so this is going to be Wahala. Maybe if you zoom out, you can single it out. It's, it will be hard. I need to just find like its origin. If I'm able to find its origin, deleting it won't be hard. It won't allow me to delete from here. So it will allow me only to delete from the middle. Correct. I've done it now. All right. So can you see what is done? Yeah. So at this stage, um, the dimensions you use for the symbol that have no bearing on the footprint, right? It has no bearing whatsoever. Okay. It is the footprint where I am going to be very particular about the dimension. Okay. So over here, it's just to help the schematic. But the only, the only thing you need to put at the back of your mind is if you make the symbol too big and you are adding it into your schematic, it will be very big in the schematic. Okay. So I will even try and reduce the size a little over here. So I'll bring this side up a little to make it uniform all around. So I am going back to Google to look at the pinout for the motor driver. Okay. This is what we have, right? Yeah. Correct. So I will now change the names of the pins. So I'll 
divide the screen into two, so I okay. can be referring to this. So I will, I'll be using the name feature. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So I'll be using the the name feature, which is this guy, R2. Okay. So I'll click on this guy. Okay, so this is a new feature I'm not aware of. Normally it's just something just pops up for you to okay. enter the name. Uh -huh. It pops up like this. This is what I know. So, so what, this, how did you have to click? Because the first one, something else showed up. Yeah, something showed up over here. But I prefer the old school one. So let's so go with the old one. How did you get the old one to come up? I didn't know. I just clicked, double clicked on it and it came. Okay. So I just click on it and then I'll change this one to slash E N E. Okay. Okay. And then I'll click on the next one. That will be what? M S one. And then I'll click on this one. This will be what? M S two. I click here. M S three and then the next one is slash reset to slash reset and then the next one is um Seven. slash sleep oh sorry so from the look of things we will need to expand this a little so i'll select this part of the symbol and then i'll move them a little to this side. Keep okay. up. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. So I'll go back to the name feature again, and then I'll change this one to step. I'll be happy if you do this alongside with me. Uh, I mean, uh, strategy now I'm okay, but. I will I will redo this. I'll watch the video and redo it so that when we meet going tomorrow, we we'll just continue from there. Okay. So I zoomed again to fit and then I will click on this one. This was V mode. And then this one is G N D. And then this one is uh 2B. This one is 2A. Next one is 1A. 1A. And next one is 1B and then the next one is VDD ground. and then the last one is ground. All right, so it says ground exists. So I'll make this one ground one. Okay. Okay. When we are awake working on it in the schematic, we can connect them together. Okay. So uh, I still think our schematic. Okay, so you can't do the connection in the symbol, right? No, you don't do any connection in the symbol. All you are doing is to define them. Okay. So you click on save. So I'll uh, make it smaller a little bit by grabbing this side and then shifting them a little to close it up. Okay. Do you like this? Yeah. Okay, correct. All right. So this is a generic symbol we have made. There's no connection between this and nothing yet. Okay. Okay. So um, these things are spaced 2.54 millimeters apart. 2.54? Yeah, millimeters apart. Okay. Which is the same as one mil. Okay. So we are done defining this one, symbol. The next thing we have to do is the what? The footprint. After that, we go to the device and then we can link them. Okay? Okay. So we go now to footprint. We open the footprint we have already created. And then we have our blank screen. Notice that there is um, an origin over here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is to sketch. Okay, so I don't need this box anymore. Okay. So let me zoom my screen to zoom. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is to also draw a box like the one I drew earlier. But before I do that, I need to Google the dimensions of this thing. Okay. Can you Google and tell me, please? 
Okay. Coming on. No problem. Where are they showing this? I have found some data sheet, but they are not sure. I think one of the places you can look at is SparkFan. SparkFan, okay. SparkFan will give you all the data. Okay. But since I have a veneer caliper, I can also measure it. Pardon me. I have a veneer caliper, so I should also be able to measure it. Okay, so measure and tell me. So the length is 20.43 millimeters. 20.43. So I'm going to draw a box and then the other side is? The other side is 15.63. So 20.43 and 15 points. Hold on, no. I'm writing. 20.63. No, 0.43. Point four three. So 20.4. I'll leave it at 20.4. Okay. And then the other one is? And the other guy is? 16.4. Um, 15.44. 15 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah, 15.44. Let's see, 15.4. Okay. Yeah, so I'll do it to one decimal, please. So okay. 20.4, 15.4. Yeah. So if you still want to go ahead, the first thing you need to do is to make your grid size mm yeah change this to mm as well if you make it m one mm you see that you cannot be able to easily get the point four on it okay get it? so i'll make it point one mm give up okay okay i change this to point one mm point one mm that way i can get the dimensions i want okay so oh, how the grid gone away? Pardon me. The grid, the grid is no more showing. Yeah, I disabled it, but I can okay. enable it over here. So display. Okay. So each box you see here is zero point one millimeter. Okay. So I will use the line feature, and then I will draw the. So I'm going up. Do you see that? Yeah. So let me just draw a box like this and then I can work on it by increasing the dimension. Okay, so to just double confirm the dimensions of this, this was 12.2 mm -hmm. millimeters, all right? Yeah. So I'll increase it now to... I have a mouse here and I'm struggling with the trackpad. Okay, so I'll use the drag button and I'll move it up all the way to 20.4. But it has passed it. Now it is almost 20 point something. Yeah. So it's now 20.4, agree? Yeah. So this side too, I can move it. It's now at 9.4, okay? Mm -hmm. I can move the other side also to 15.4. Okay. All right. So this is the exact size of it. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some terminal blocks over here. Okay. No, yeah, some uh, pin headers over here. Yeah. So uh, the pin headers are very close to the edge of the board. Mm -hmm. 
to yeah. try and bring them as close as possible to the edge. Okay. Now, there are a number of approaches to doing that. You can choose to import the normal pin header, or you can choose to create your own footprint. I'll go with the creation of my own footprint approach. Okay. So you see the pad here? Yeah. I'm going to have this pad. But before I do that, we need to know the dimensions of the, the, those pin headers. Okay. I know that the whole size for those things, the drill, the drill size for those things is 1 mm. 1 mm, okay. Yeah, 1 mm, 1.1 1 .1 mm, they are good to go. Okay. So I'll choose this guy, one of these parts. And I'm going to choose this one, like this guy, and I'll make the drill to be one mm. Like okay. This. Okay. So it has. But given... why, why did you choose that particular one? Okay, let me use the other one, the one that you prefer. This one. Oh, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. It matters. When I chose the longer one, I realized it will, it was going to bring the hole a, a bit far far away from the edge of the board. But I know very well that these guys made those pins to be so close to the edge. Okay. So I decided to choose this one. But one problem I'll face is you don't have enough area to solder. You get it? So I'll okay. modify this one to 1.6 and see what will happen. So 1.6, you have some little bit of area to solder. Okay. So I'll change this to, let's see, 1.9, see what will happen. It's too big. Mm. So I'll leave it at 1.77. Okay, so this is good. Okay. Now, this is where I need to change my dimensions back to the previous one, which is the 2.54. Okay. So that when I place one and then I step like this, the next dimension will be 2.54. Okay. Uh, so I'll go back to the grid and then I'll change the grid size now to 2.54 of milli millimeters. You see that? Okay. Uh, problem. Problem. Why? The problem I'm having. It can only allow me to place here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's only allowing me to place up to seven. So all mm -hmm. the gap here. So let me choose a let me choose a certain like um. Let me choose a small a fraction of that figure I selected earlier. Okay. So I'll go back to grid and then I'll change it to you know what? Let's still work in millimeters. Okay. Okay, so this is 1.7 mm, 1.27 mm times 2 is what? 2.54, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I'll place this one here, place the next 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 one here. Voila, do you see the magic? Yeah. And then the next one goes here. First time I'm teaching the Ghanaian how to make a library part. So we have our 16 parts over here. Okay. Now, um, there is this macro in Eagle where you can place a text. For example, if you do forward slash value like this, and then you place it close to, it has to be in caps. You said forward slash, but you typed greater than. Yeah, it's greater than, sorry. Okay. Uh, use the one I do, not the one I see. <laughs> and then forward slash name. Sorry, greater than name. It's a macro that when you use it, it will be able to help you to define the name of the thing later in Eagle. When you add it in your schematic, you have... Okay. 
But then I want to add the its real name. So e e four nine eight e. Yeah. And I'll rotate it, and then I'll place it. You right click to rotate, right? Yeah, right click to rotate. Okay. So I'll place it somewhere here. I'll place it down here a little like this. I know there's some reset and stuff around here, around pin four, so it will be long. Okay. Good. So the next thing I will do is to, so I'm good to go now. So the footprint is done. And I'm very sure that it will work. If you are in doubt as to whether it will work or not, zoom your computer screen to 100%. Like okay. the, zoom the eagle to 100% and then put the module on top of it. If it, it, if it doesn't fit, yeah, it should match. Okay. So now we are done with the... So there is still no connection between the symbol and the... Yeah, there's no connection. So we are done with the footprint. We are done with the symbol. Now we go back to device. And then we open our device. So you notice we still have a blank screen here, all right? Mm -hmm. So the next thing I'll do is to click on, uh, you see the add button here? Mm -hmm. And then I'm coming to add the symbol. So I'll place the symbol. Okay, I want the origin to be in the middle, like this. Okay. I think you need to shift to the left a bit to actually be in the middle. Okay. No problem with that. My professionals, forgive me. <laughs> then I better turn on the grid and do the needful. Mm -hmm. I, I've not selected the right grid. Let me just change the grid to something I like. To 1 mm. So are you happy now? Okay, so our origin is now in the middle. You can place multiples of them, okay? But why, why would you want to place multiple of them? Example, when you have like O-pump. You see okay. that O-pump, they normally separate the, the various O-pump. The yeah. ones with the more TDs in a hand. All right, so we have placed our symbol, but we've made a mistake. What is this plus here for? So we should have done what? I made a mistake. You see this plus here? Mm -hmm. This is the origin of the device. Symbol, the, no, the symbol. But okay. I ignored it when I was uh, uh, drawing the symbol. I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. So let me just ignore this whole process and then go back to symbol. Open my symbol. And then... I now know that the origin is somewhere down here. I, I, I can see it. I can't see. So let me oh. just turn off the grid. You zoomed out and it went away. I, I can still see it. Uh -huh. So I can see it now. So I'll select everything. And then I'll use the move button. All right. OK, so let me just place it somewhere around there, I beg. OK. All right, so I'll save my symbol now, and then I'll go back to my device. And I'll press on OK, and then I'll click on Add Part, and then I'll select this new symbol that we've created. I think I don't like the grid it is giving me, so I'll make it 1 mm. And I'll press on OK. I want the plus to be in the middle like this. Okay. Hold on. I want the two origins to match. Unfortunately, it's not showing me the origin of the other one. Okay. So it's fine. I can move it. But what would be the problem if the, the, you don't let the two origins coincide? It, they will, it will feel very awkward when you are using it. Okay. When you, are, when you import it into your destiny, it will feel very awkward. Okay. okay. So now the next thing I'll do is I've imported the symbol. So I can click here on new. 
we import the package, uh, the, the footprint. So you see that you click on the new here, and then you select what local package. Okay. You select the one that we have created. So here we go. It's showing here, but it is very tiny. Mm. And you see that. Yeah. The next so thing we are going to do. Warning symbol. Pardon me. Yeah. The warning. Uh, we are not done with it. Okay. So you can save. When the moment you save, you have connected the two, but you've not connected the pin. Okay. So let's now connect the pin. So you click here on connect. Mm -hmm. So you begin to see that ENA is supposed to go to what? E1, which is this guy. Do okay. you remember? Yeah. So you can just click on connect. The next one, which is what? It's supposed to be what? MS1. Mm -hmm. So you come here to MS1. And then MS1 goes to P2. It and means the order in which we place the parts matters. Yeah, the order in which the footprint, the footprint is just, the footprint is, is, is in a chronological order. But the names here have been rearranged. Okay. So we've, we are now, we've connected MS1, now MS2. So we select MS2. Now MS2 is supposed to go to pin number three, which is P3, this guy. Yeah. So you connect. Then the next one is MS3. So you cool. connect. The next one is what? Reset. So you scroll to yeah. slash reset. You connect that to what? P5. Yeah. The next one is what? Slash sleep. Mm -hmm. Next one is step. So you scroll and then you select step and then you connect that to P7. Okay. Next one is what? DIR. This guy, you connect to P6. And then the next one is Vmont. Vmoto. Mm -hmm. To V Moto, you connect that to nine. Next okay. one is GND. To GND, you connect that to ten. Okay. Next one is two B. You connect two B to eleven. Okay. Two A. Twelve. Next one is one A. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. One B. Fourteen. And we are left with VDD and then mm -hmm. ground. To VDD to 15 and then ground to 16. All right. And then you press on OK. Are we good? Yeah. And you said we were going to connect the ground and the ground one. Yes, when we are in the schematic. OK. So we are done now with our part. I see. A few things to note. You see the PS, these things here. Mm -hmm. You can actually change them to the these names over here. Okay. Or you can choose that when you are um, drawing the schematic, you don't name you don't name them inside here. Okay. There's a way to make it neater, but I think I'll I prefer it like this. Okay. So let's just save it, and then we can close this now. And then we go back to our project, and then we go back to Moto Driver. So as for the 3D file, you have to download it online, right? No, you can make it yourself. I see. So you can use Fusion to make it, and then you import it into it. Oh, OK. So you click on Library, Update All. OK. And then let's click on Add Part and see if our part will be there. So the name is what? A4988, correct? So it's not there. So let's look for the library. Do you know where I saved it? Um, so you go to the, you go to library manager, and then you click on browse. I think I saved it here. Into. Let me just look for it. The, the window be able to tell us. Uh -huh. It's in yeah. eagle slash library. Okay. Document slash eagle slash library. So you just open library manager and you go to in use and you browse and go to documents slash eagle. 
slash libraries. And the last thing I created was this guy. So we've added it now. Okay. And then you can now click on add part. And then you can type in your name. And then here we go. You see that? So this is what you and I just created. So you press on OK. So we are going to be having two of them in here. Two, yeah. one, two. Are we good? Yeah. So the next thing, let me make a few, let me do some few tests and see. Okay. The first test you want to do to make sure that your library part is okay is if you want to connect a pin. You see this guy? It doesn't connect very well. Wow. Uh -huh. You see that it, there's some little kink before. Yeah. So let me do something. So you can click on. So what causes this thing to happen? Pardon me. What causes this issue? What causes the issue is because I have been you have been using different grids to draw the same thing. I see. So you can put your hand on control and then you press on the origin. And then you put your, you press on the origin and then you put your hand on control and then, so let me try it, join it again. No, the same thing. Mm -hmm. This one works well. This one also works well. This one also works well. So why is this one not working well? Let me try this one and see. It also works well. They both work, all, all, all should work well. So if you, if you keep changing the, the grid and all of that. I think that now I got it. Yeah, it got it because I did something. Okay. So let me just go to the default and then press this. And then you can keep your hand on control and then you click on it. When you do that, it brings, like it merges the, the, the grid okay. with what you've already done. So let me try it again. All right, so it, it's okay. 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 Okay, so the next thing we are going to place on our board is the those connectors for the stepper. Mm -hmm. So I'll click on add part. So those connectors you can get them under. You, you can just use pin header connections for it. Yeah, that works. Yeah. But I know they have like their dedicated library. So let's use one by four. Okay. It looks something like this. Yeah. No, but this one is spaced out. That guy cannot fit on it unless I use another cable to connect. Yes. But it will be the same, the same footprint. Yeah. Is it four pins or six pins? The step it's four. Is a bipolar? It's four. Okay. Does it, do we take it to this side of the driver or we take it to this side? Um, we take it to the right side. It connects to 2B, 2A, 1A. 1A, 1B. Okay. So, but do you know you can use this module to drive two motors? Two steppers? Yeah. I didn't know. Uh, let me see something. Uh, okay, 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 okay. You can use it to drive two DC motors, but you can use it to drive just one stepper motor. Yeah, because I know I can use the um, DC motor driver to to drive the stepper by to take both motor ports. Correct. Sorry, I'm trying to confuse you. Okay, so we are good to go now. So we need yeah. to connect the two B, this ones together, right? There's something wrong with our module. We need to fix it. I mean, uh, let's not worry about it since time is going, but I will, I will recreate what you did with me. So 
that would be the learning experience for me. Yeah, there's something wrong. Like I, I have to just when I'm done, I was supposed to adjust the grid so that it to conform to the the grid system over here, but I did not. But it's good I highlighted that something like this will happen. Yeah. This thing I need to do with this. Just click on control. I think reset and sleep are connected. Okay, I now know how to do it. So let me just do this. One, two, three. So you see the move button. Mm -hmm. You click on the move button and then you click on the control. Once okay. you are moving it, then you place it. Okay. When you do that, it conforms to the grid of the system that you are using. Okay. You see this grid? This one is matching, but this is not matching. You see? You see the boxes don't match for well. I know there's some method to do it, but I forgot. But I'm sure there's definitely a, a library for this A4988 thing. Yeah, wow. there is. There is. But at least you've seen the experience of making your yeah. own library. Yeah. All right. So you click on, uh, so we are going to connect this one. Let me change the grid to something I like. Okay, so this one now conforms to the one mm grid, but this does not. So I click on. To try to make this. Thing. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. So I've connected these things to the four motor drivers. So I'll connect this one as well. Okay. So to be. The old eagle won't allow us to connect this if you don't correct this in there. Okay. So we've connected our stepper motors. The next thing is we need to bring power to this board, correct? Mm -hmm. And that goes to V mod and ground. Okay. So we will use um, a terminal block. Now, sometimes you need to memorize the names of some of these uh, components. Yeah, otherwise, how do you even search? Uh -huh. So, for example, the connector I want to recommend for us to use is W237-102. Okay. That's the two-pin terminal block. Okay. Well, I see how they even call it. Wago screw or something. Correct. Searching for home. Mm -hmm. So, I'll Place it here. Do you want one or you want two? Oh, only one, and then we connect um, both. The two V uh, modes to it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll show you now how to use the label. Yeah. So you can create a small net over here. That's the connection. And then you mm -hmm. place another connection over here. Okay. You place another connection over here as well. Okay. Now, the next thing we are going to do is we want to label the pins. But okay. before we do that, we need to give those, uh, those nets a name. So let's okay. call this net VMOT. 
and then let's call this one as well. So the moment we give it a name, you can go up here. You see this one? Mm -hmm. Do you like this? This label? Yeah. yeah. So you have this option where you just display the text beside it, or you have this option, which is this one. Ah, uh, okay. You've been seeing this a lot. Yeah. So that's how to make it. So it's okay, asking so me if I want to connect net this to Zmos. Yeah. And I'll say yes. And then I'll come here and I'll call this one to VMOS. And then I'll connect it as well. So I have my three VMOS over here. The next thing I'll do is the ground, correct? So I'll click on add part, followed by GND. And then supply, power supply, ground is normally under power supply. Supply one, supply two, these guys. So you can choose the arrow one or you can choose the one with the flat system. Okay. So you can place it here. And then you can place one here. You place another one here like this. Why, why aren't we using labels to connect those? You can use labels as well. Nothing will go wrong. But I was just recommending we use the... Okay, let me use the symbol for this and then I'll use the labels for some of them. Okay. Okay. So the all right, so I'll draw a small net here. One problem you notice now is the text we have here is too big. Mm -hmm. So we need to reduce the We need to reduce the size of the text. Otherwise, we can move the label closer to the pin so that the ground one can go beyond. Correct, it. correct. But you can also do this. You can click on the label and then you click on properties. Okay. And then you can change the size to, let's say, 0.4. You see that it reduces. Okay. And then you take this one as well, go to properties change it from 0 0.07 to 0 0.4. So we are going to rename this ones to ground, to G and D. Okay. And then we make this one to 0.4. So we draw another net here as well. And then we can name it as GND. We say yes, we change the size to 0.4, and then we are good to go. All right. Now, one of those things you notice here is you see this one, this ground one here. This ground one will be ground one, it will not be uh, ground. Okay, it is ground. All right, so we are making progress with the schematic. So we have our power supply, we have our stepper motor connections. Yeah. Now then the rest of the things, the enable and those things. Um, I think the, the ones that I would need is the step and the direction. They are the ones that will have to con um, be connected to microcontrollers. The reset and sleep are supposed to be connected together so we can use a net to connect them. Okay, so reset and sleep. Yeah. Connected together. Why are you just trusting what I'm saying? <laughs> no, it's your project. Yeah, but you are the boss here. I, I'm telling you, um, this is how the body is used. And... If it is wrong, I will, I, I will oppose you. I see. <laughs> but you have to own the project. Let's confirm from this, um, the diagram you opened where we copied the names on Google. Don't worry, you, we can do all of that in the background. Okay. I'll share the file with you when we are done. Okay. Yeah, but I'm sure because I, I have the circuit on the breadboard here. Yeah. Okay. And then sleep and directions are the ones that goes to the 
microcontroller. In fact, if I like, I can extend um, MS1, MS2, and MS3 also. But whether you turn them on or off determines the step size of the stepper model. By default, it is 1.8. And if you want a more fine grain control, you can turn on either MS1, MS2, like different combinations for different step size. But 1.8 is fine. Okay. So what I'll do is, what I'll do is, um, I'll bring out MS1, MS2, MS3. Yeah. Yeah. And for all of them, and then I'll bring out the steps and then the direction for all of them. Exactly. That makes total of 10 pins. Yeah. After that, we will need to have our, uh, the interconnection between the microcontroller and then the board. Mm -hmm. And then 5 volts from the board to something here. Yeah. So we will be needing 12 pin header. But how yeah. do you want it? Do you want it to be the dual one or you want it to be the single one, the one, the one looking at? What will you advise? I'll do, I'll do dual. Okay. Why? Uh, if, if you want to make the PCB yourself at home, I'll go with the single. But if you want to make it in the factory, just go with the dual one. It makes life easier and faster. Yeah, I'll do it in the factory because I have um, acid here. I'm even scared to open it now. I want a way to get rid of it. Hmm. So let's go with the dual. So I'll click on add part and I'll go with the connector. So I'll go somewhere, pin header. One thing you can just type is pin followed by space, followed by header. Okay. And then you get some nice, we need two by six, right? Yeah, to get 12. Okay. I've brought myself. Okay, so here we go. Two by six. Is that what you want? Yeah. Correct. So that we dedicate half side to one of the module and another half side to the other. Correct. So I'll still use labels. Okay. So I'll just do MS1, MS2, MS3. Mm -hmm. So I'll connect. So I think when we finish this, you can um, leave me to reproduce everything we've done and then go willing tomorrow, I'll show it to you and you guide me if you see any mistakes in it. No problem. Thanks. So which percentage of your students in Ashesi knows how to do this? Two percent. Jesus Christ. No, but people who have gone out know. But that's a very fair percentage to mention to you. Yeah, but I mean, it's part of the curriculum for you to teach them these things, right? Yes, it's, it's, you don't get this in the curriculum, but we do it outside the curriculum. We have something called skill sleep. I see. Where we teach them technician skills and things that they need to survive in the real world. Okay, so I've been able to hack this to look nice more. So oh, come on, why would you want to do this to me? That's why I don't like the new eagle. I just want to move the nets here. It's trying to be smart with the curves of the wire. Yes. But I don't know why it is like selecting from all the way from the bees. Maybe some intern wrote it. 
I just want the top part to move. Okay. <laughs> he joined the company and he had to apply his graph theory, so. This small overlap of the net on PS7 and PS6 is, is, is no issue, right? Which one? Um, um, on the uh, PS6, come down to that, no, that, that, that other one. Yeah, see PS6 and PS7. You see the, the connection between the reset and sleep? No, come to the next, the next moto module. Yeah. Yeah. CPS and PS7. You see that there's some why an approach of a crowd. Oh, no, 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 and yes, okay, it was all from the this in the grid for the symbol that we drew. Okay, I'll go, I'll go and reset it before I share the file. All right. Okay, so I was on. Do you know any company in Germany that does these printing of PCBs? Euro circuits. They are located in the uh, Netherlands, but they do all over Europe. Okay. Okay. So, the... so we are now ready to place the net. Yep. So let's just use the name feature. Let's call this guy Okay, MS one A and I'll yeah. repeat it and I'll call this one MS what would be the name? Okay, MS two A. I'll call this one MS three A. And I'll call this guy step E. Yeah. And I'll call this guy D I R E. And then I'll call this guy M S one B M S two B. MS three B step B and then D I R B. Are we good? And then I'll come here and I'll still use my labels. Yeah, I think we forgot something. The the VDD and the ground, they they go to the microcontroller. Okay, I made provision for it. Okay. You forgot. So here we go. Was it not five things from the... Yeah. What about these two? This were right. for the VDD and then the ground. But we've not yeah. connected them here, so let's connect them here. Yeah. So we use the name once more. So we can inter interconnect them, right? VDD. Yeah. I'll rotate it to look something like this. Okay. And I'll name this one to VDD. Correct. Yeah. I name this guy VD. Let me name the right side ground. And I name the left side. Is that a convention? It works. My mind, my mind works like that better. Okay. I know that all grounds are on the right and then VD yeah. is on the left. Like I'm careful when I'm on the left, but I'm not careful when I'm on the right. Yes, Does it work for you like that too? No. 
Okay. So we call this one VDD. All right. So let's just, this one will be MS1A. Connect. MS2A. MS3A. And then this one will be step A. And this will be DIR A, correct? And then a mirror of it will be here as well. So MS1B. Okay, so this one will be MS to B MS three B. Do you hear those warning sounds from my end? No. Oh, okay, good news for you. Step A, step B, and then step. DIRB. Nice. Are we good? Yep. So what's left now? Nothing. Yep. Don't you think this reset and sleep go to any ground? No. Okay. No. No. It's just, they are just connected. Okay. So we will need some capacitor on this board, one for decoupling and one for keeping uh, the board stable. I forgot that too. It's between VMOD and ground. Uh -huh. Because these boards are very unreliable if you don't have capacitors on them. So can we use just, uh, okay, they said the capacitor should be very close to the board. Otherwise I was thinking, can we use just one capacitor between the um, power, what, what do you call this um, X11, X12? This is, uh, these are, uh, this thing. <laughs> Terminal block. Yeah. Uh, if not for that requirement. So it is, it, no, like when, when you are doing it, it, you do all that at the PCB side, but we need to add the capacitors now here. Okay. We've not switched to the board yet. And it would be best if we put it near the module than near the power supply. Okay. It should be down here somewhere around here. Um, it's, it's between V mod and ground. Okay, so around here. Yeah. Top of the module. Okay, so let's add those. What's the value of the capacitor? Um, anything above 470 microfarad. 470. And it should be able to support the 12. Okay, so I will. Is, is uh, this thing is, is a polarized capacitor? Yeah. So you can get that one in a library called RCL, resistors, okay. capacitors, inductors, RCL. So this is our beautiful RCL. You can see we have what capacitors with the EU symbol, trimmer capacitors with the EU symbol, polarized capacitors, EU symbol, and the repeat of those with the US symbol. So we are going to choose the polarized EU. So all of these are surface mount. We keep scrolling down. So those in the cap most capacitors above 470 UF and above 25 volt. Okay, you let's Google it. So that it's not be like I'm the one who told. Yeah, I mean on, on my board I'm using a hundred hundred microfarad, but okay, that's fine. So let's go 470. UF. Yeah, you see my screen? Yeah. 470 UF by 25 volts. So the dimensions for this 
this are what eight by twelve mm. Hello. 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 Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh -huh. So eight by twelve mm. The diameter is eight, and then the height is twelve. I see. Okay. So when we are looking here, we should look for something that has a similar dimension. Mm -hmm. So we are scrolling all oh, these are surface mounts. So here we go. So this one's the diameter is four, uh, the diameter is six. Do you see that? Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Diameter six. So this one, the diameter is four. This one, the diameter is five. Four. Four. I see, yeah, five to ten. This is ten, and this is the eight that we are looking for. All right, yes. Bob. So we choose this guy, and then we place it somewhere around here. Two of them. So we can actually connect them like this because they are all going to the same net, and then connect them like that same net and then we'll use the copy feature you see the copy here mm -hmm. copy the ground and then you paste it on it and it's connected you see that okay and then um we connect the positive v side that has a is it vdd or vmod right yeah vmod okay Uh, okay, so let me do something then. Mm -hmm. So I'll move this guy somewhere here. Move this guy to somewhere here. And then I'll move this guy somewhere here. And I'll move this label somewhere here. I'll actually delete the label for now. So I'll use the delete and then I'll delete the net. And then I'll connect this guy to this guy like this. And I know my capacitors are connected. After that, I will extend this net a little like this. Okay, let me do it from the top. And then I'll now be use the name feature. And I'll call this net VMOS. And then I can place it somewhere around here like this. Are we good? Yep. Correct. So I'll click on save for now. Okay. Is there something else for us to do? Uh, I think that's all. Okay. So we go now to switch to board. So you get this warning. Do you want to blah, 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 create from schematic? You say yes. Okay. Hmm. And then when you come here, this is your PCB interface. Okay. At this stage, I will recommend you do some drawings manually. Wow. How do you want your pin headers to be positioned? How do you want your motor drivers to be positioned? The, uh, the arrangement has been one of the challenges I face. I think oh, no, it's, it's, no, so you need, you need to draw it, like plan it on paper. You don't uh -huh. just start pushing things around. Okay. So like put in mind, where is the Arduino pin? Where is the Raspberry Pi pin? If I'm using this dual, uh, what's the name? This dual pin headers, how are they going to be positioned? How best can I put uh -huh. the motor drivers? Okay. So okay. Let's start. I will just do something, but the final thing lies with you. Okay. At the end, I'm just guiding you. I'm not the one doing it for you. Uh -huh. Okay. So. I'm beginning to place the parts on the board. So I want okay. my first motor driver to be turned somewhere how like this. I think this is how me I like it. You like it differently. And I want my second motor driver to be symmetric and be close like this. Okay. You see the origins of the footprint. Yeah. yeah. See how it useful it has become now. Yeah. Correct. And then do you see that something appeared over here? A4988. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one too, something appeared over here. Yeah. 
Now, if I had named, if I go back here, and then I come to, do you see something over here? No. Nope. If I come to name, and then I click on this, and then I name it A4986, and I press on OK, nothing has appeared, right? Yeah. But when you go back to the PCB, what has appeared over here? Okay, the A9, A4986. So do you see the use of those macros? Yeah. Correct. And do you also see that this one, this, uh, these names have their own origins? Yeah. And move it around anyhow you want. Okay. Correct. There are other macros you can read around them. Okay. And um, by the way, you are, you are doing this on the top of the PCB. You are placing yes, them on I'm the top. Yes, I'm placing them on the top of the PCB. But I can move them once I am done arranging. Okay. Based on this origin over here. Okay. Because um, usually for one-sided, we, we do this, um, the, the routing should be done on the bottom, right? Yes. Okay. But this is going to be a double-layered board. You may not be able to get it to be single. Mm, because of the many connections, right? Not really. Mainly this thing will worry you if it is single-layered. Okay. The dual one will worry you. But it's possible. Let me finish and try it and see. Okay. So now, second question. Where do I want to position my stepper motors? I'm close to each board. Okay, so I've changed my mind. I prefer to have my motor drivers this way. Okay. The uh, motor. So that the, the pins can readily go on their side. Correct. This way. And then... I know my stepper motor is going right here. Yeah, that makes it easier. And then my stepper motor goes here. Yes. And then I know this one can be somewhere around here. And this guy can be somewhere around here. Okay. One good thing that can help you here, you see this rat nest? Mm -hmm. You click on the rat nest and it gives you the, the shortest possible distance between each component. I'm not seeing it. It was like this. Okay. Several wires. You see, there's no connection between this one and this one. The VMOT is still connected to the terminal block over here. Okay. When I click on the rat nest, see what happens. Have you seen uh, it now? Yeah. Correct. So now the last thing is my power supply. Where do I want my power supply to come from? Close to the edge. I would prefer it to be close to a capacitor and then something like this. But I don't know your design and I would still recommend that you go with your own design. Okay. So I'll click on everything and then I'll move it, move group, and then I'll bring all of them down here, close to the origin. And then I'll squeeze the board this way. You notice that Eagle is more flexible than KiCad. Yeah. Of course, Fusion, Fusion have um, years of experience in building these things. So. No, no, no. These things were all done by Eagle before they bought them. I see. Eagle has been in existence since 1990. Wow. I started using Eagle in 2008. In 2008? Okay, that is still quite some time. That time, 5.6.0. That time, yeah, I was learning programming. <laughs> I was also learning, I learned programming in 2009. Okay, so let me do some magic with this guy and see what happens. This looks better than the previous one. Do you agree? Yeah. So I'll click on this, click on rat nest, and see what happens. Good. So this looks something like a PCB we can route. So I'll come here and then define the rules. So that's, you click on tools, followed by DRC. Mm -hmm. And then how many layers? Two layers, clearance. The first one here, which is the wire, like the traces on the board, how, what should be the distance between them? 
Okay. I'm sure you know about the unit meal. One meal is the same as one over a thousand of an inch. One over one thousand of an inch. Of an inch, correct. Okay. Which is the same as uh, 0 0.127 millimeters. Okay. So uh, the distance recommended one for a PCB you can make in China can be 15 mil, and then between the parts also 15 mil. And the via as well, I can make it 15 mil. Okay. The distance, the edge of the board, and where the next uh, cables pass, the, the next traces pass through. 40 okay. mil. I can make it 10. Okay. That's, I want um, it to be as close as possible to the edge of the board. Okay. Since you've told me about the Euro circuits, then do you have any experience with them? No, but I know they've been in business for a very long time. Over so they too, I can upload my um, GABA file and they will print and send to me. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I think they'll be closer to me than China. Yeah, China is just three or four days. These guys, yeah. you try them and let's see. They'll be more expensive than China. Of course. Okay, so the drill, this one as well, like what should be the spacing between them? So I'll leave this at six mil. And then okay. sizes. What should be the thickness of the traces on the board? What should be the minimum? So I'll make this one uh, 32. Okay, yeah. 32 because, but I'll change the one for the power to become thicker. Okay. Okay. And then the rest of the things you can ignore them. So I'll click on apply followed by select. So let me try single-sided board. So I'll click on tools and then I'll go to auto router. This is the feature I, I miss when I'm using um, KiCad. KiCad doesn't have auto router. You, have to you never get that. So you go to, you just leave the top at auto, you leave the bottom at auto. Um, please, you clicked on auto, auto route, right? I click on tools followed by auto router. Okay. Tools. So I can I want if I want more uh, iterations I can click on high. If I want yeah. very few iterations I click on low. Okay. So click on high, and then you click on continue. So you see that you have about twenty two different iterations. Mm. Okay, so mm. this is double layered. Let me try the single and see what happens. So I'll go back to tools. Now discontinue this. I'll go to tools, discontinue this, continue. Okay. Why are you doing that to me? Like it doesn't want to enable this side for me. Maybe it hasn't. All right, finished. I've done it now. It hasn't finished, I know. So I'll let this one to become not applicable and then I'll just do the bottom. So I'll oh. click on, I was expecting this. So I click on auto router. I remember Oxygen told me I should never use auto router. I said, my brother, I don't have time to be routing cables. The thing is an algorithm that has been implemented. Well, why? Let me use it and be free. I mean, there are times where you, you might have to, but life is too short to be routing wires. Yeah. Let me finish the other job and then I'll disable it. Okay. Because me, that has been my biggest issue with um, KiCad. I'm not good with the routing of the cables. Thing. Like Eric is really, really good at doing them, but me, yeah. Let me, let me do my AI, learn my. <laughs> I want to delete some file here. How, how did you know? What, what created all these things? The auto router? No, the eagle. Let me see. It has created a lot of, like it creates, keeps creating different iterations of the board. So I want to just delete all the file. It won't harm it. No, it won't harm anything. Okay. All you need is the SCH and then the PRD. Okay. Can delete everything over here, nothing will happen. 
All you need is this two things. Alright, so I click on save and I click once more on auto router. Alright, so it has forgotten about all my things. Click on not applicable and I click on auto. Alright, so now we want to get single layered board. So we'll be stuck at 90.9. Okay, so this one got 97%. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, but it has succeeded, right? No, it's uh, it, it stopped at 90, 97%. Oh, which means it couldn't route it couldn't all get of to. Yeah, so maybe one wire is left. But it doesn't matter. When I see the wire, I guess I will be making paper manufacture for me. Two sided is okay. Two sided is okay. I'm yeah, just like it. showing demo in it for you. Yeah. At home, I can't make the two sided easily. But if okay. people are manufacturing, they should work for the money I pay them. Okay. So uh, oh, this machine can work out. So another thing we can also do, I'll go back then delete the job files again, okay. and then. I'll show you something else that you can do to make your life easier. So let's go back here. Now we can use what you call the ground plane. Uh -huh. So the ground plane makes your power connections very stable. So you can click here. There's a tool called polygon. This guy, polygon. You select polygon. You select the layer where you want it to be. And then you can draw a polygon around your circuit. So you can have the top one as well. If okay. you want a, a polygon on top, you want a plane on top. So let's call this one GND. And then when you click on the ratness, this is what happens. So it connects okay. all the grounds automatically. Nice. So you can click on tools, followed by auto router. Let's use the single layer and see what will happen again. Okay. So you've got 100%. Mm. Another 100%. I like this one. So I'll click on end job. Uh, so when you finish, you have to select which job you want to commit to. I see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this is the bottom, and uh, the copper fill is the big, big. The ground of... plane, yes. Mm, that's beautiful. You can make this better, but this is just a sample. You can actually draw your own power planes over here. Like here, you can choose to draw your own planes over here. Another plane yeah. over here, another plane over here. You see that? Yeah, but you said you make the wires for the power connector bigger. Yes, yeah, so all I have to do is to just make sure this V mm -hmm. is bigger, this one. Yeah. So I can unroute it and I just make it bigger. Or I can create a plane over here for the VMOS. Okay. Let's say if this is a double-sided board, I can create a plane on top here called that plane VMOS. You mm. Yeah. So it will be connected on top and it will be very thick. Let's see. So for tomorrow, think of other features. This board looks very simple. I think okay. there are a few missing things. Things that can help you show you that the thing is working well. Think okay. of other features that we can add to it. Okay. 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 I'll do do so. you mind if I chip in my own project for the last two days? No problem. No problem. Why not? Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Cool. Charlie, thank you very much. Thank you okay. very much. I will send the money to your TransferWise account. <laughs> Why not just do my Momo now? No, no, I don't. I don't even have Momo and Megana is kind of a Medini nature, so I have to. Okay. Thanks to your transfer wise. Those people who have booked, have they made any commitment? Ghanaian. Yeah, yeah. So I got. Uh, I scheduled two uh, events, one on eleventh, and I'll be meeting one of the guys tomorrow. 
Ah, sí. Ah, en physical event. Physical, I see. I, I got four people and um, one person has tried to make a commitment, but most of them have booked in February, so I'll see. Mm. I, I will actually, I'm trying now, what I'll do is I'll be advertising things that are relevant to people. Example, a lot of Ghanaian technicians want to build audio amplifiers. Mm -hmm. I'll go like build an audio amplifier for a very small fee. Like I'll, I'll research and then find what they want and then I'll throw it at them. Yeah. And I'll keep getting the small 50 gun, 100 gun, 50 gun, 100 gun, 50 gun, 100 gun. I think even for you, you should be able to teach people who are learning um, repair works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, just it's also, it, uh, it's also an option. Yeah, basic computer literacy and then teach them because it will, it will take them far because Charlie, it's about time we stop depending on the, on the, on the West. And you, I want to also yeah. do the welders and fabricators. I want to, hey, let's do 3D modeling. Yeah. Model yeah. a machine and let's weld it together. Yeah. It's about time we also started producing things because, Charlie, hmm. otherwise there's no respect for the respect that Chinese have now is because of China. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's because of China. I mean, me, the greatest fear I have now is all the vaccines they'll bring for African nations to inject. And we were never, I mean, we never participated in creating it. It's, never contributed in it. For me over here, I said I'm going to delay taking it as long as I can and even avoid it totally. If I right. can. I, I won't take it. But you guys, your side, things are getting more dangerous with time. I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I mean, they are saying if you, are, if you don't take it, you not travel, blah, 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 blah. But I'm happy because last Sunday, the, some of the Germans stayed at the more against the vaccination. And here, the laws work. When somebody says he doesn't want it, you can't do something. Of course, him. yeah. I know those Germans. They will definitely yeah. take it. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 really, I really appreciate that I have... Um, their support because I can't trust this. And you can't actually take traveling rights from people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, some of the airlines are saying, yeah, if you don't take the slow, if you don't take the shot, you won't fly. I'm like, okay, fine. You won't fly and then you use the airplanes and get money and let's see. Let's see. Yeah, we, we just decide we won't fly and then get money and let's see. <laughs> All right, Charlie. All right, Charlie. It's nice having you for the past one and a half hours. Thank you very, very much. You make an excellent video. Send the video to me. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you.